Summer's almost here, and that means hot days. And with hot days, you need lots of water. So I dropped into the local dollar store recently and picked up three different models of water bottles. And I thought, hey, I still have the Muse rotary sitting in the laser, so why not make some custom labeled water bottles? And that's what we'll do in this video. So stick around. Hi, I'm Steve and I make everything and welcome back to the shop. As I mentioned in the lead in, I found a couple of cheap water bottles. Uh, one is painted and one is stainless steel. Uh, down at the local dollar store, they cost a couple bucks each. I think $3, they were really cheap. So if I damage them, it's not really a big deal. The painted one will be easy because we can just engrave the paint off. The stainless steel one is, is a little more of a challenge. And the way we'll solve that is with uh, a product called Surmark. Uh, which is a coating you spray on and then when you engrave on that coating it actually embeds itself into the metal so it creates a permanent marking uh, into the into the well whatever metal but the bottle that that we're going to use you'll see other products like uh, like molly lube uh, used as an alternative because it's about half the cost this can was around eighty dollars for this tiny can it goes quite far though so it's not really that serious but but Molly Lube is a lube, so it's a lubricant, so it's oil-based and cleanup after you engrave is a mess. And the engraving actually doesn't work nearly as well as it does with some of the coatings that were designed for this. So keep that in mind as we go. So we'll start with, with an alignment procedure. If you watched the last video, which I'll link up here, uh, Walker from Full Spectrum Laser left a comment there to address some of the complaints I had honestly and they were just mostly me being dumb. So go read those go read that comment, watch that video too if you if, you know if you want to see how you can do some engraving on glassware. But I'll walk through my alignment procedure which ad addresses some of the concerns that or some of the answers I guess that Walker provided and then I developed a bit of a procedure on my own that in ensures Pretty much every time that you're going to get exactly what you expect and uh, you know I'll walk you through that so let's get going okay so the laser's starting up and just a couple of things if you watched the last video then you you may have seen in the comments uh, some feedback from Walker at FSL and based on a couple of things I had in in the last video he kind of pointed out some things so it turns out that this uh, rotary attachment that I have is, is uh, I guess, the newer variant of it. It's quite different than some of the previous ones. So some of the challenges I was having were based on watching previous videos uh, on YouTube. And in all of those cases, the stepper motor assembly was at the other end. It was on the right-hand side. And Walker pointed out that in the new one, it goes on the left hand side and that fixed a lot of problems the stepper motor going backwards and uh, aligning properly you can just literally shove this against that rail at the back and it's perfectly square so that solved a lot of those problems now as i've been playing with this one of the things i've kind of learned some is a couple of tips and so when you start up the laser what i would suggest is i i normally push the the laser head over to the upper right hand corner of the laser and that's ultimately the home the initial home position it does that if you're in absolute uh, measurement mode it it, uh, it does that on startup and then comes back over to the left so i'm actually going to do that manually this time so i've started it over there the laser's up and running now what i want to do is is manually move the laser over here to the zero position and i'll explain why i want to do that in a second so i'll just grab the the normal controls here and we'll get close first oops by hand and and then we'll manually move over to the zero position so now the laser's at zero zero and because we're in rotary mode the y axis doesn't really do anything so what we now want to do is, is for a normal operation, is put a, a bottle in. So stick it in, and we'll do this in more detail as we go. But now we're at zero, zero. So if I hit the unlock, the laser is now unlocked. And what I can do is first 
put the laser so that the the red dot is just on that screw. I have the uh, idler assembly turned around because this bottle won't won't accept it. So do that, and then put the laser roughly where you want to start your uh, your job, and hit the lock again. And now that red dot is zero zero. And I really wish the that FSL would when you're in uh, relative mode, like or relative mode here for the laser, like we are now with rotary, that somewhere on the front panel, there was a button that said, make this my zero. Then we wouldn't have to do all that extra stuff. We could just literally put the dot there and say, go to zero. So Walker, hopefully you're still listening. Anyway, that's, that's how, I, uh, how I set it up now. And what that really means is the setup in, or the layout in RE3 is way easier than it was because my image always starts at zero, zero. So I don't have to uh, play around trying to get things lined up. Anyway, that's just the kind of preamble for getting things aligned. Okay, so I got the laser running and I loaded the first image for the first bottle I want to do. This one will be the uh, sort of pre-painted bottle. And all I've loaded is the raster here. And we know that the, the home position for our actual image is zero, zero. So what I want to do is I'll set well, actually, first, we also know that the bottle is lying sideways, so we want to rotate this, so we'll do that first, so we don't have to, we don't have to position twice. Now, it actually happens that it's at zero, zero when I loaded it, so we can do a perimeter check, and when you do that, you'll see that on the, on the laser that it's doing the right thing. So we're, we're pretty much ready to go here. The last thing we want to do is just check our power settings, and 250 uh, dots per inch is fine and you know it's a it's a metal bottle so we're not going to do any damage with high power so uh, we're ready we'll, we'll just leave everything as the default here and 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 go now what you'll notice i'll record the laser engraving this what you'll notice is i mask the bottle and the only reason i did that is in part it allows me to put some marks on to make sure that i get the image exactly where i want it on the bottle and uh, it also keeps some of the smoke residue from the paint as it as the paint burns off uh, you know off the bottle and it's a lot easier to clean so with that we can get the laser going and and print this or engrave it rather Okay, so for my second bottle, I'm actually making a, a gift for for uh, for someone and, whose nickname is Yogi, and so I'll do the same thing. But we're gonna we're gonna handle the bottle a bit differently. So again, I'll rotate it if I can, and I'll set the position to zero zero, and uh, that should be good to go. Again, don't worry about the the red bar here when you're in. Uh, relative mode it doesn't really matter because it's relative to the to the laser dot so it's okay to the laser won't throw any errors or anything when you do this so uh, and you saw that in the last one too so anyway I'll just run a perimeter again to make sure everything is right and when you look at the bottle you'll see I did things a bit differently I applied some some surmark which is some sort of ceramic coating that you can spray on metal and when you engrave it, it makes, it makes the metal, it actually embeds this, this spray into the metal uh, because you can't, with a CO2 laser, at least a low power one, you can't mark uh, stainless steel. So uh, I'll use that on this one because the bottle I'm using is not painted, it's just a pure stainless steel. Now, one of the things I wanna do is get the settings right. Now for Surmark, uh, it's a bit different, so the speed of 100% is, 
is is the problem. Power, we definitely want 100%, but Surmark, the slower you go, the darker it becomes. So what I'm gonna do, I want this to be nice and dark, so what I'm gonna do is actually make it the speed one. So it's gonna take you know, quite a bit longer. The previous job took about five minutes. This one will certainly take more than that because I'm going at literally a hundredth the speed. But, uh, but what we'll get out of it is a nice result. So I'll, I'll jump over to the laser, run a perimeter, and, and, and run the laser engrave. So there you have it. Our bottles are both engraved and they came out quite nicely. I'll show them to you in a second. A couple of footnotes though. Uh, first one, which I didn't talk about in, in the video, when you lay your bottle down and you're ready to start engraving, if you have a Muse 3D, make sure you hit that autofocus button and I'll stick a two second video up here to, to show you what, what that really means. If you don't have a Muse 3D, then you have to focus manually. You can use your um, a focus puck, but uh, be aware of the Surmark if you're, if you're focusing on a Surmark bottle. Surmark is really just a powder that's sticking to the surface very loosely. So if you touch it with your focus puck, you're gonna mark it and uh, you will basically scrape that Surmark off. So. Be careful when you're doing that. The Surmark itself, you don't have to wait for it to dry. Literally with the Yogi bottle, I sprayed it on and and just started engraving. Uh, it dries actually really quickly anyway, but you don't have to wait. With that, how'd they turn out? Well, quite well. The painted bottle, which was by far the easiest, really a perfect job. And uh, the Yogi bottle, and again, the light here is a bit reflective, but I'll post a, a better uh, picture up in the corner. The Surmark basically made it, I mean, it's permanent. You can feel in the bottle the engraving, so it's not coming off, and I've literally tried to scrape it with something, and, and it's, it's there. It's there forever. So anyway, uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. Go and make some bottles if you have a Muse rotary as assembly. If not, I, I recommended any caution I had in my previous video. I've now kind of thrown away because it works very well, especially with the alignment process that I kind of laid down here. As always, uh, I'll put a video over in the corner here to, or over on the side uh, to watch if you want to find out a little bit more. And if you do, I'll see you over there. But as always, please like and subscribe. And if you are buying a Muse FSL or, uh, or other FSL laser, feel free to use my coupon code in the description. And I'll see you next time.